stock. Great. So we have our sample, and we've emptied it. We empty it out into buckets, and it's always a good idea to divide it into small, manageable volumes. So, for example, about four liters of sediment into a bucket, uh, and, and into a bucket that's a total of say 16 liters or so. So it's a much more manageable size. And this is our chance to check the actual volume. Uh, of material because the, the material collected on the site is not always exactly what excavators might claim it to be. And so with a bucket like this, which has measurements on it, we can have a look. Note that it's four liters and make a note of that in our sample record. And then we're ready to process the sample. And so what we do is we add water and stir. Uh, and so we have a dry sample there. We simply add water. So the bucket is nearly full. And here's one that I did earlier. And so, once we've got our water in there, we simply stir. And the idea is to free your charcoal from the archaeological sediment. This is perhaps the most intimate you'll ever get with your archaeological site, as you make an effort to break down and loosen up the clods, the mud, the sand, and to bring forth your archaeobotanical sample. And as you can see, lots of bits of black, lots of bits of charcoal will float to the surface. Then once it's well stirred, what you want to do is pour it, on, pour it into your sieve. Now the trick with this is you want to pour the charcoal that's floating, but keep the sand that isn't floating which means you have to pour gently. Not too slow or you won't get anything, but not too fast or you'll end up with sand clogging up your sieve. So as you'll see, I rock it gently to try to draw the charcoal out, bring it forward, but just pour off the top layer of the water and you can sort of see how the charcoal works its way over the edge and gets caught in the sieve. Now inevitably, you won't get everything the first time. And so, you can see here in the sieve that we have quite a bit of char charred material already, but you can also see here uh, in the bucket that there's still black specks, there's still charcoal, charred seeds, and other archaeobotanical material. So for this reason, we need to repeat the process. And as a rule of thumb, at a minimum, you need to repeat this five or six times, adding water and stirring. And so you need to repeat this process five or six times, adding water and stirring, two or three times, and then several more times to bring the charcoal out. One of the real advantages of the bucket flotation method is that you can have a much more direct control over your recovery. And so you can actually see when there's still charcoal and charred material in the sample by the black specks that are there, and you can therefore uh, repeat the process again until you get all of it out.